the greatest thing in the world is if you can be completely connected to the past, but let it not interfere with you today. You know what the Vashemtiv says? The greatest slave driver is a yesterday. What a slave driver. Everybody is a slave to their yesterdays. And that's why the world isn't free, right? Everybody says, okay, listen, we already are accustomed. This one hates this one, this one hates this one. Why? Because they hated each other yesterday. What's about today? You know what the Kotzke Rebbe says? Kotzke Rebbe says, if I'm a Jew today only because I was a Jew yesterday, my Jewishness is worth not even an onion, right? And I want to tell you something very special. All the Jews who are Jews today because they were Jews yesterday, they are the ones who look at the world with eyes of yesterday because everything is yesterday. But hopefully I and Jerry and Danny and Richard and Greg and Michael and, and Sender, you know what eyes we have? Mamash. And like I've never seen anything before. You know what we do when we bless the new moon once a month? It's very special because we Jewish people, our calendar is based on the moon, right? Yeah. So I connect myself to the moon, right? You know what I say? I say to the person next to me, hey, Shalom Aleichem, never seen you before. You know the difference between the sun and the moon? The sun is always the same sun. The moon renews itself all the time. And if a Jew wants to know if he is a moon Jew, a real, a little, a real moony, right? <laughs> a real Jew. The question is, when you see a person next to you, do you say, Shalom Aleichem, hey, go out. I've never seen you before. So I want to bless the whole world to have moon eyes, to look at each other like never seen each other before. And above all, I want to bless us Jews. You know, a lot of people, maybe 100 years ago, they saw someone who told them all about Yiddishkeit and they didn't like it. Forget about what you learned yesterday. What's about today? What's about tomorrow? And right now, God is opening gates for the Russian Jews, not only to be good Jews, not only to be sweet Jews, they have the inside fire to be the leading Jews in the world. You know what's going on in America? They have everything. They have a lot of money, a lot of freedom, but they lost their fire, their heart. They are Jews from yesterday. And we need the Russian Jews to put a little injection into our hearts. You know why Israel needs the Russian Jews? Because Israel is there because 1948, we went to Israel. It's 40 years ago. We need the Russian Jews who come today and teach us Israel today, not of yesterday. We need a new Israel. We need fire. We need flames. And you know why we have so much trouble in Israel? Because we have become old. All Jews, all citizens, all Zionists, everything is old. And we need you, Russian Jews, to come and give us injections. And um, we have to give each other injections. And I want you to know something. Um, how do you know who's a good doctor? Have you ever seen a doctor who's not so good? He does no way to put injection. He puts here and No, it's not so good. He puts here. No, not so good. <laughs> uh, give me the other arm. Uh, and then he puts here, puts there. He puts the needle in 100 places, and then he doesn't know how to do it, right? What's a good doctor? And then, a good doc and then you pass out. A good doctor is, he says, I have to give you an injection, right? He plays around with the needle. And then he says, aren't you giving me the injection? He says, I gave it to you already. You didn't even feel it, right? You see, Israel doesn't need half good doctors to come with needles that we had for 2,000 years, needles. We need people to come, the good doctors, and give us injections without us knowing. And also the whole world, the world doesn't want injections with a needle. The world wants an injection with a hug, with a kiss, with good words. And especially our children. You know, we don't teach, we don't need teachers who tell the children, sit straight, make your homework, have good marks, comb your hair. We don't need that. We need our children to have teachers who give them strength and courage and tell them how beautiful the world is, how beautiful they are. And um, there has to be a beautiful world.